Hey guys, welcome back to the final episode of this BFXU course. We're really excited that we made it all the way through. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value and learned a lot through the process. Uh, this is sort of an epilogue episode that we're doing here. Um, if you remember in the previous episode, Keith had assigned uh, myself and Jess, our producer, uh, the homework to go through the course and actually produce an effect. So uh, we have Jess here, we have Keith here. We're going we're gonna to jump in and we're going to look at our, our effects that we created and uh, do a little bit of a review and talk through it and see what we could do to improve those effects. So uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for being here again. Yeah. Hey, hey. guys. Excited to be back. So uh, Julian, Jess, it's, it's been a couple weeks now. Um, were you able to make your very first effect? We did. We did. I think Jess and I, we made something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. good. I um, we definitely made something. Definitely I, made an effect. I was definitely able to follow along uh, with the courses that you guys provided and very interested in seeing what the um, the feedback is on what we both did. Awesome. And how did how did the process go? I think for me, the most fun, I think, is once once I sort of settled into the the groove of things and kind of had all my particle, my Niagara system set up, uh, then it started to get really fun playing with individual parameters. You know, like we, we obviously there's a, there's a whole segment. The, the first kind of thing we do is the embers. Right. And I, I had a lot of fun really like playing with the, the, the kind of the velocity or the, or the, uh, acceleration forces or things like that on the embers specifically to make them look how I wanted them to look and make them awesome. pop in the way that I wanted them to pop. So that was, that was the most fun part for me was like everything, all the, all the technical pieces are set up, everything's plugged in. And then now we can, uh, now we can play. I love hearing that. I mean, that's, that was exactly the, the goal of this course layout for me, which is focusing on getting you guys to be able to play. One of the most difficult things about visual effects is that there's so many pieces that are connected to each other before you can finally see what you're doing. And oftentimes we get lost in that. So knowing that you were able to connect those dots and then actually just see your changes have an immediate impact and just fiddle and experiment. That's, I love hearing that. Yeah, that was, that was a blast. And then I think uh, the, the most challenging I think was, was maybe a, something that a lot of people are familiar with, but just, you know, like learning user interface, you know, like, like I kept forgetting which part of the Niagara system I'd have to like to add a new, you know, acceleration force or add drag. Like I was like, where, where does this go again? Like which part of this kind of uh, Niagara module do I have to like what menu do I have to go through to find so I, I got more comfortable with it as we went but that was definitely like a um uh, I think it's just you know the, the the challenge of learning any new tool or any new software you know just le learning where where things are absolutely what did it feel like for you guys playing the game and seeing your effect spawn like the thing that you made I immediately uh, had other ideas that I wanted to incorporate. I wanted to put an environment around it. I wanted to put a new gun uh, in there. I wanted to create my own sound effects and make the the gun and the explosion have a different <laughs> sound effect. So my, my mind started going off in all of these separate directions on how I can build upon what was already there. To already be thinking of like the next thing to do with this, I think is, is, is a really cool thing. And that's, I, I plan on doing that. That's my favorite thing ever. I, I love that. Okay, next question. Um, now that you guys are professional production VFX artists, are you guys ready to do a uh, your first ever VFX art review? Oh boy, yeah. Let's do it. Let's jump. Let's just get it over with. You okay. know, to rip off the band aid and and then cool. jump right in. Cool. I'd rather well, do then... the review. I thought you were going to quiz us. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's after. Um, oh, all right. God, well, then no. we're actually gonna we're gonna jump over to our internal review tools, uh, and then we're going to invite our VFX director, Jason Johnson you actually run an art review with you guys and look over your work. Sweet. Let's do it. My name is Jason Johnston. I'm a VFX director here at Beyond Effects. And so Julie and Jess, you guys uh, put together some uh, cool impact effects. Let's take a look at them. I think uh, I think cool is cool is uh, generous. I don't know. We don't know if it's cool yet. How but, dare you. Uh, <laughs> How dare <laughs> yeah, it's true. You. Jess is a super cool. <laughs> okay. I agree, Jason. It is cool. I think for your first effect, it is definitely cool. Thank you. That's, that's great. That's that's what we want to hear. So, so I guess I guess do you want to give a little um, kind of introduction to for those who don't know, like how a review like this would be structured normally? Yeah, sure. So the point of an art review is to get together with your peers, other effects team members, and to get everyone's eyes on it. And we all feel that you know the best work is done through collaboration. There's a lot of times where we can't really see all the aspects of the effect, um, and so just getting everyone's input and opinions um, is really helpful to really plus out the effect and make it the best that it can be. Nice. So let's take a look at yours, Jess. Okay. Cool. So 
got some uh, fire and smoke, some rocks, some sparks. Um, so yeah, you know, I think that first initial feeling, it's feeling really good. Um, there are things that can make it better. Um, so if we take down each of the elements um, and break them down, <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, you just went, went the extra mile. Just went I extra did. and actually destroyed the cube. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. The giant cube. I like it. Final boss yeah. of your of your project. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. <laughs> we got distracted. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, cool. So let me uh, just talk about the different elements. You know, like if I was to take a next pass of this, you know, looking at the, the rocks, the first thing I would do is incorporate some drag. Right now, it feels like they continue that momentum that they have from the get-go. Um, so getting that air drag in there will help them feel like they have mass they're slowing down. I would also um, look at the bounce of the, the rocks. You know, currently, they are they're bouncing quite a bit. And so you want to slow that down, you know, so that there's, like, friction on the ground, you know, and they're um, slowing down because of that. Right. Um, and then if we look at the, like, the fire sim here... The couple things that jump out to me are that right now, it even though it's a cool sim, I feel like the, the amount of detail is maybe a little too much for this scale of effect. Um, there's all that small crunchy detail in there. Um, so I would maybe take a pass at that and reduce some of that. And if we look at like one of the frames where it first comes out. Um, so right now it's this fiery you know explosion but it doesn't feel um, hot. And mm. that's because of a couple different aspects in my opinion. I feel like it could um, really use some glow and then also making the, basically the hottest parts a little bit brighter and then maybe having some light cast onto the environment because this thing is emitting light. And so I would look at adding those things. And then if we um, step into it, you'll see that as it starts to fade out, there's this black fringing around the smoke. That's something you see quite often. Um, and there's a little trick to, to getting rid of that. So in your Embergen sim, one thing you can do is, because um, the alpha, it's getting mixed in with the black background color. So one little trick is to set the background color when you render out the sim to a color that is close to the smoke color itself and so that way when it mixes in as the alpha is going down towards zero it mixes into the color that is already existing in the smoke very cool so that'll help that um one thing i would say about the smoke in general is that i feel like it has too much drag when the when the explosion happens you have all these rocks and smart uh, sparks coming out but the smoke kind of stays where it's at it expands and then stops which you, you do want it to slow down but i think it could go out a little bit further and um looking through some of the comments that our other team members left i think one of the ones that i would super agree with is that your embers are very much overshadowed by the rest of the effect like the embers almost go away right away what Jason's calling out a lot is that you have a lot of different forces in here. There's a really big concussive fiery hot explosion that's not really casting light and not producing a lot of embers that are expanding, but the rocks are flying out crazy far. And so it almost feels like the explosion is coming from a different force or, or outputting a different force than what's impacting the rocks. So tying those all together a little bit more would more cohesive. I think that the smoke also lasts too long. I think it could be cleared up a little bit faster. You made an interesting comment that I want to go into a little bit more. Um, talking about the fire, you mentioned that there's a lot of detail in there, and you would forget the, the phrasing that you used, but I'm assuming you meant that you'd probably simplify the details to make it bigger and read better? That's right, yeah. Yeah, I feel like for the, the amount of crunchy small detail that's in there, it feels like it would be a bigger explosion. And because it's coming from this projectile hitting, you would expect bigger details in there, less um, of this crunchy small detail. And so if we'd actually taken like the, the world scale of our sim in Embergen, for example, and made it smaller, we would get bigger, broader movements instead of more small, minute, noisy movements. And those bigger, broader movements would actually make, you would pick them up a lot more in the effect when you're watching it, and it would make the effect feel a little bit better. Understood. Cool. That's what I've got. Um... Awesome. That's all fantastic uh, feedback and information. One thing I, I noticed, and there is a comment on here from, I believe, Kaylin, there are some rocks that sort of just like fall to the to the ground in the effect. And I, I did notice that that was in the tutorial as well. So I didn't know if that 
was something that was intentional or if that's something that was that was overlooked oh putting me on the spot now um oh. <laughs> it's been weeks since i made that tutorial with you guys i, I think that's probably overlooked um, okay if i remember correctly we only had one rock emitter and we were just using a sphere and so some of them probably were just shooting straight down um yes they are so, they are just like falling to the ground yes yeah, yeah. and so I, I would say that's something that we should have adjusted or we should go back and adjust and there's a lot of ways you can do that including just making it not emit from the full sphere making sure that they all have slight upward velocity as they impulse outwards they're all going to change the feel and shape a little bit but clearly the rocks just falling straight to the ground is not a good feel so it needs to be adjusted gotcha okay cool cool let's uh take a look at julian's uh oh i'm nervous so jess <laughs> set a really high bar Oh, yeah. I love that there's so much variety even between these two. Yeah, this is feeling really great. Um, you know, there's some uh, similar things I'm seeing. Um, I'm seeing that same black fringing, you know, that is in Jess's version. Um, and that's something, you know, that you can take care of with that background trick that I mentioned. Besides that, you know, looking at the sim, I would say that if we just go to like when it starts I would say that the fire color it's a similar note that it could get a little bit hotter when it's first emitted like right there in the core um, and then maybe just play with you have like light being cast which is really awesome I would just maybe carry its life a little bit longer Jason can you go back to that frame or just pause on one of the early frames for us yeah um, all of your embers are starting off as a as a complete Beer. Like I can see the initial shape. Um, and so I, I might say that you could spike up the opacity, uh, like have it skip the very first frame um, or the size or use one of the other curve tools so that you don't get just such a solid sphere on the very first frame of the experience. Just kind of draws my eye. Yeah. You know, speaking of the, the sparks there, one thing that really jumps out to me is that they get pretty active right at the end and almost feel like little um, little fireflies. And so I would reduce your, I assume you're probably doing this with some curl noise. I would mm -hmm. just maybe um, reduce that. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because that was also one of the notes, a couple of the notes uh, from our artists as well here on, on, on uh, called that out. Uh, and <laughs> it's funny because I, uh, I did it on purpose. I'm not saying it's right, but... Um, I really, I really like embers, so I kind of went a little bit like we in the tutorial. We only make one ember sim, um, and I actually made two. And the second one I made like way more erratic and much more red. Uh, so I, I, I agree. I think in a, in context in an actual game environment, probably not the right choice. But uh, I did have fun. I did have fun with the particles. I really like the the color variation that you added with it. Like I like the red. Um, the thing that it. It's breaking though is the sense that there's one unified force from an explosion. Sure, right? yeah. and that's that's what you want to watch out for because your entire effect is telling the story, and mm -hmm. your embers are not really fitting into that story. Right. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with the color. It's really nice, and you know, having the embers in there it really adds a lot to the effect. It's just like when they start to move on their own, it kind of breaks. Uh, looking at the rocks, you know, it's the same similar note. Like, they just continue that momentum, like they're sliding across the ground. So I would increase the friction and maybe add some drag to them. You know, the ones that are airborne um, feel feel pretty good to me. Um, but the ones that are, you know, going outwards along the ground, they bounce, they slide. Um, so just looking at that would help it a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Couple, uh, just a couple things I wanted to call out, too, for the for the viewers who are watching along. I think uh, because the uh, the the explosion sim the ember gen sim is one that we are providing as a downloadable file for you as you're going through this so you're, you're more than likely going to uh, encounter this same sort of that that call out you had about the black fringing on the smoke since it's the same it's the same explosion um if you're if you're using our downloadable asset i should say you're probably going to see that same thing but i think to jason's point that's a and that's a great tip on how to resolve that and blame the teacher for that <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying not to, uh, but uh, since you since you've opened up the door, no, I mean I think that pretty much covers it for me. Keith, did you have anything else? No, these are great. These are actually better than I expected the two of you to do. So um, thank you for surprising me. And uh, <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for hopping into VR Sound of Reason. Absolutely, anytime. All right, so uh, Jason seemed to have liked your effects. I think that they're. 
pretty cool. I'm a little bit proud right now uh, that you guys were able to pull that off. How do you guys feel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty good, I think, Jess, right? Like, we had some good feedback. Yeah, it was great feedback. And, um, you know, it was really kind of cool to, to hear the opinion and the feedback from one of our VFX directors um, and getting that, that expert I guess, knowledge onto something that I did for the very first time. That was a really cool experience. And I think I'll need some lesson um, on how to translate some of what Jason said. Absolutely. But In your defense, a fair amount of that feedback was uh, feedback that is true from the effect that I made for you guys to demo as well, right? So uh, again, you can, you can blame me ultimately for portions of it. <laughs> Like like I was I was saying when we were reviewing my effect, it's like I'm not saying it was good, but the embers was was, Fun. was on purpose because I was like embers, more embers, more em like I had to stop myself from making three or four different ember systems. <laughs> you know, like I just really love the way it's and so fun to. Uh, so so I, what our teammates uh, at various times have described this uh, this career sometimes or this this role as as being somewhat of a magician, and I I think this was my first time really feeling that in a in a tactile way. I, I guess uh, the the kind of final question at, at this stage I, I know we could talk for a while but the the question that i'm wondering i'm sure jess is wondering and, and probably our viewers are wondering keith is uh, uh how do you learn more from here we have our first effect we've gone from essentially nothing to our first effect what's uh what are what would be some good next steps uh, i love it okay so we got you guys to the point where you were playing and where you're experimenting and where you're excited to dabble that is i think the key to learning visual effects the single best way that i can think of to learn is to continue expanding upon what you guys are already doing and just dabble and play. If you go to the Unreal Marketplace, so if you load the Epic Game Launcher and go to the Marketplace over here, what you will see is a huge amount of resources. My favorite one that I would highly recommend that you start with is just go and download Epic's The Valley of the Ancient product because it covers effects that are used in cinematics, in beautiful environmental storytelling and action sequences. And you can load every single one of those effects and just piecemeal through exactly what they did to create it. What I would actually suggest is open theirs and then make a new Niagara asset and just copy the properties and then play. Move their texture over to yours and then just see what happens when you add 50 particles instead of 10. When you change the velocities, when you add more curl noise and just play with it. Doing that, you're going to start to see exactly how that effects artist made that effect and came to their end result. If you want to get more hands-on training, I think that the two best people in the industry that are teaching right now are Thomas Harrell and Jason Kaiser. Thomas Harrell runs his own course under his name, all about how to use Niagara, how to do technical work in materials, and really giving that core understanding of what the tools themselves do, which is obviously super important to what we do. And then Jason Kaiser with the Effects Apprentice as one of the most uh, inspiring teachers of, of the craft. Past that, once you start doing that and you want to start showing off your work and getting more feedback, um, while we don't have great educational resources at the college level, we do have a very, very active and uh, lovely community online. So uh, realtimevfx.com is a great place to start building that community, but also checking out just Twitter and the Discord channel that's also linked to on realtimevfx.com. But um, honestly, it would mean a lot to me if you guys comment in the comments below to call out tutorials or classes or great resources that you found that you think should also be mentioned and we'll be sure to pull them up. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and obviously stay tuned to our, our social channels as well. You can follow us um, on pretty much all social platforms. Uh, certainly subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, because like I mentioned, we're going to have a, a, a lot more great content coming out. We do uh, th this this particular piece of content is certainly for a beginner level, but we have other content like our level up series geared towards people who are, are doing effects and we're going to have a lot more coming out. So definitely stay tuned, follow us and subscribe and we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you guys so much.